For this differential equation, we're not being asked to solve it, we're asked to approximate the solution to this differential equation using a slope field. Now, what would a solution be? Well, let, let's at least talk about that. A solution would be some mystery function so that if you took its derivative and you multiplied that derivative times x and you added that to the original function, you would get zero. Very difficult just to kind of dream up, you know, off the top of your head. And so if you get a, a differential equation like this that's difficult to solve, um, and right now, this early in the, in the course, we don't have any known techniques of how to solve these guys. Eventually, we will. Eventually, we'll be able to solve this explicitly. But, um, but for now, uh, let's just try to approximate what that solution would look like using a slope field. Okay, so if you watched our last video, what we said was if you want to um, draw a slope field, the first thing you have to do is solve for dy dx and then isolate that on the left-hand side with everything else on the right-hand side. So let's do that first. So we'll um, have x dy dx equals negative y if you subtract the y to the right. Then we'll divide both sides by x and we'll get dy dx equals negative y over x, right? So that's step one, always step one if you want a slope field is to isolate dy dx. This guy on the right hand side is going to be what we call a multivariate function. It's a fancy word that basically just means a function with more than one variable. Uh, this is a function of x and y right here. Okay, now if you remember from the last video, we can find the slope of the solution curve um, just by plugging in x, y points. So if a, a, a solution curve goes through the point 3, 7, well, you could plug in 3, 7 to see what that solution curve's slope should be at 3, 7 just by plugging in you know, that, that particular given point. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. I, I, first of all, I'll rearrange these terms so that we have more space here. So I took that differential equation, and here's where we solve for dy dx. And he, here's going to be the generic process for uh, examples or homework or test problems that you would do. You're going to pick some points, and then you're going to find the slopes that are associated with those points uh, using the differential equation. And we're going to fill up the graph with a bunch of short little, short little uh, tangent lines that have the uh, a correct or appropriate slope. Okay, so there's no real uh, right or wrong way to choose these points. We'll just kind of start picking points. Um, let's pick the point, um, you know, in no particular order. How about like one one? So right here at one one, what would the slope need to be at the point one one? It'd be negative one over one. I plugged in y and I plugged in x. So that would be a slope of negative one. So right here, if if a solution curve went through this point, it would have to go through that point uh, this way, right? It would have to go through this point this way. So you could not have a solution curve that went through one one like this. It wouldn't have the right slope. So we, we've discovered a little bit, a little tidbit about what the solution curve looks like if it went through one one. All right, let's do this with a few more points. Let's do uh, maybe like uh, one comma three, one comma three negative three over one, it'd be negative three, slope of negative three, that's a little steeper. And you notice, uh, you'll start to notice patterns here. If you did one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, they would just continue to get steeper, right? Uh, likewise, if you picked uh, maybe like three comma one, then you would get negative one third. Oh, that's a little flatter. Okay, so it looks like you get flatter as you go this way and you get steeper as you go this way. Right, negative one third. Um, another pattern I notice, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. All of those would give you a slope of negative one when y and x are the same. So you get this type of pattern. So if you do enough of these sample points, you start to see patterns start to emerge. Now, if you're unsure about the pattern, pick more points. But uh, I, I think I'm fairly confident in saying I think that at least the first quadrant would look something like this. Okay, And uh, you can do similar things 
uh, you can pick some points and find the slopes for the uh, the second, third, and fourth quadrants as well. Now, just for time's sake for this video, I'm going to skip that part. You're welcome to do that. But it turns out that there is some nice symmetry here. So I went ahead and filled out the entire thing just to speed things along. We see the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third, and the fourth quadrant. Now, what does this help you with? How does this help you approximate the solution for this differential equation? Well, as we said earlier, any solution curve that goes through a particular point would have to have these slopes. And so we can see what would be and would not be solution curves. Uh, this curve would not represent the solution to this differential equation because there are places where its slope doesn't agree with the direction field's slope. Uh, however, if it stays in line, if it stays uh, kind of goes with the flow, if you will, it'll sketch out a solution curve. So let, let's try this here. Let's say uh, we have an initial condition of 1, 1. So your solution curve has to go through the point 1, 1. So do you see what the um, solution curve would look like? Well, I, I think it would look something like this. It would get steeper this way, and it would kind of get flatter this way. Okay, uh, And so this would represent the solution to that differential equation. It's not perfect, it's, it, we don't have the solution, I can simply see the solution, which is better than nothing. It's, it's better than not having anything at all. all. Right now in the last video I had mentioned, on rare occasions you might could look at this guy and say, oh hey, I recognize him, he looks like such and such. Typically we can't do that, but uh, in this case I think we're lucky enough that we can. Uh, I kind of I cheated, I kind of picked this example on purpose a little bit. So uh, let me make myself some room here. It looks to me like this guy, this pink line, is y equals 1 over x. You, you might remember that graph from uh, some, some algebra class you had. As x gets larger, this goes to 0. And as x gets smaller, this goes to infinity. And it does go through the point 1, 1. So it's kind of a win-win situation. So uh, for this example, I think we got very, very lucky that we were able to look at this guy and discover who the solution curve is. Normally you can't do that. But uh, again, I picked this example because I actually want to try it. I actually want to see if it works. So let's take this guy and let's see if it really does satisfy the differential equation. If y equals 1 over x, then what is dy dx? Well, if you thought of this as x to the negative 1, then the derivative would be negative x to the negative 2, as you would know from, from like a Calc 1 class. So rewrite that as negative 1 over x squared. All right, so let's, let's see. Is that really the same thing as... Here, let me jot my differential equation down. Is that really the same thing as negative y over x? Negative y over x. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Let's take y. Let's take negative y over x. So you see what I did here. If this really is the solution, I should be able to substitute this for y. So I have negative y over x. And I'll ask you, are these the same? Is negative 1 divided by x divided by x the same thing as negative 1 over x squared? Yes, it is. These are the same. Now, what does that mean? That means we found the solution to the differential equation. This is the guy who satisfies this differential equation. That's the function whose derivative is itself negated divided by x. Or to say it another way, it's also the solution for this differential equation because that's how, that's how it looked before we rewrote it. And so the way we discovered this was just by happenstance, uh, by looking at this um, uh, slope field and seeing what the uh, solution curve looked like. So again, the only reason I picked this one was just to convince you that this pink line really is a solution curve usually we'll stop at drawing the curve. Normally we don't actually try to write out who he is. Uh, I just kind of did that for this example um, just to help you kind of wrap it all together in your mind. So anyways, hope that helps you kind of understand differential equations uh, a little bit better and slope fields and how you can approximate solutions to first order differential equations using slope fields.